this is called as vector of displacements this is called as vector of external forces this is called as the mass matrix or inertia matrix this one is called as the matrix containing all the coefficients of damper this is called a damping matrix and the finally the matrix containing all the stiffnesses is called as stiffness matrix and the size of matrix is typically 2 by 2 that depends upon the number of degrees of freedom of the system so if the number of degrees of freedom are n so the size of all these three matrices are n by n next we need to understand their uh, properties and their physical significance of each one of these term involved so uh, next comes the crux uh, what inference we can draw from these matrices so inertia matrix so the first property is that this matrix is always symmetric this matrix is always positive definite looks like that this matrix is uh, diagonal but it is not necessarily diagonal in this case it looks like it is diagonal but in general this matrix is not necessarily diagonal we'll show you uh, in the next session we'll take one more example where we'll see that the mass matrix is not diagonal damping matrix it is in this case it turns out to be symmetric but it is not necessarily symmetric and the stiffness matrix is always symmetric now we need to understand the significance of uh, each one of the terms involved so for that i'm i'm drawing this figure again of uh, the original system let's draw it uh, over here in this uh, vacant space so now we can clearly see the mass matrix m1 is uh, interacting with m2 only so here is mass matrix is typically diagonal in this case now comes the damping matrix what these all four terms signify so that we need to understand clearly so now if you see the diagonal terms the diagonal terms on the first body now you see on this body there are two dampers are connected c1 damper and c2 damper so that's why on the first diagonal term you have c1 plus c2 whereas on the second diagonal let's take a let's a green color on the second body m2 you are having it is attached with the fact of c2 and c3 so that's why on the second diagonal m2 by 2 terms you have c2 plus c3 now comes the off diagonal terms now m1 is interacting to m2 with the help of c2 only so that's why you have this c2 term and same way the m2 is interacting with m1 through c2 so that's why this c2 and their main tendency is to oppose the motion of the second body so that's why the sign is negative the same is true for the springs the first body directly connected with the two springs so k1 plus k2 will come over here as directly same thing is true for k2 plus k3 because the second body is under the influence of two springs k2 plus k3 whereas the first off diagonal term this term this represents the force exerted by the spring of first body on second body so that's why it's minus k2 because the tendency of the first body is to oppose the motion of the second body so this is called as off diagonal terms now let's try to see it it's with the help of a much complicated example we can directly solve this from the physical relevance so we are having three degree of freedom system having three bodies and let's say there are standard four springs so you have k1 k2 k3 k4 c1 c2 c3 and c4 now let's complicate it slightly more we will introduce more coupling terms let's say the second body is attached directly with this with by spring k6 first body is attached to the third body with spring k5 and the second body is attached to the fixed support let's say this by spring k7 so now using this physical interpretation we can write the dynamics directly so we can solve it as a subjective problem also or we can answer it if with the each one of the term is crystal clear to us we can answer this question within 30 seconds also that what is the each term so let's try to see so mass matrix because it's a 3 by 3 system so simple m1 0 0 0 m2 0 0 0 m3 the most challenging one over here is the k matrix 
let's try to see what is k matrix so if its size is 3 by 3 because it's 3 degrees of freedom system now if we see carefully the first body m1 is under the influence of how many springs k1 spring k2 spring and k5 spring so what will come at the first term k1 plus k2 plus k5 and now see the first off diagonal term this term is k12 the k12 is the reaction of the first body or interaction of the first body with the second body so that you can say the first body interacts with the second body with the help of k2 only so that's why only minus k2 this is the term k13 which shows the interaction of the first body with the third body and you can see the first body interacts with the third body with spring k5 so minus k5 now comes the second body so second body you will see you have a k2 you have a k3 you have this k6 and we have this k7 also so the second body is under the direct influence of four springs so we have k2 plus k3 plus k6 plus k7 so that is the diagonal term which is k22 term k22 which means the second body on itself now let's try to see what is the influence of second body on first body that interacts to only k2 so that becomes minus k2 and the second body interacts with the third body with k3 only so that becomes minus k3 now comes the third body it is under the influence of spring k4 k5 and k3 so on the third diagonal we have and then the third body has interaction with the second body only by uh, k3 so that's why minus k3 the third body has interaction with the first body by k5 that's why minus k4 so that is how we can quickly derive without doing any pre body diagram without making newton second law without collecting the terms and making it in the matrix form if you do that way also you will end up that this is the final k matrix you will receive and at the end of that whole process so that's why this is called as the physical interpretation of each one of the force involved we can directly see what is being happening and we can directly solve this question within few seconds and the properties of k matrix you can clearly see this k matches with this k2 so this whole matrix is symmetric in nature so whatever will happen whatever is the structure of the equations whatever is the structure of the system k matrix is always symmetric because it is the property of the system. what's the reason of k coming out to be symmetric uh, you can say it's like a newton's third law and newton's third law says action and reaction are equal and opposite so whatever the force second body applies on the third body the third body will have the same reaction force back this is called as off diagonal terms off diagonal this is basically represents the coupling between the adjacent bodies because this k you draw for any kind of system this always will turn out to be symmetric because k all the forces involved are conservative forces whereas in the case of c when let's say let's say if we draw a on a wheel and there is a frictional force are there right mu n and this will also come under the effect of damping but frictional force you know the amount of friction there is a more heat loss there is a dissipation of energy so those are called as non conservative forces so that's why in general if you see the c matrix will not be symmetric in this particular example this will turn out to be symmetric but you cannot say that is the property of the system even if you apply on 99 or 9009 cases and if you find a one such case where this property is not being followed so you cannot say it's a property of the system let's say we have 5 by 5 matrix so again in this case if you see let's try to focus on the k matrix because mass matrix is pretty simple it's a diagonal m by m so in that case for this kind of matrices we can say the structure of this matrix is diagonal the size is 5 by 5 because there are 5 degrees of now if you see the k matrix so you can say for the first body it's k1 plus k2 minus k2 because the first body interaction with the second body with minus k2 first body has no interaction with third body no interaction with fourth body no interaction with fifth body so 0 0 0 second body 
on itself you have k2 plus k3 the second body with the first body is minus k2 second body on the third body is k3 zero zero and then the third body if you see on itself is k3 plus k4 the third body on first body is nothing then third body on second body is minus k3 the third body on fourth body is k4 the fourth body is k4 plus k5 and here it is zero zero here it is minus k4 here it is k5 so if you see only the structure of this equation if it is huge matrix you will come only as three entries one as the diagonal entries one as super diagonal entries one as sub diagonal entries just everything is zero so this kind of matrices are called as banded matrices the main focus over here is if you see let's say if this is 20 by 20 matrix so all the entries will come only on the three diagonals one is called as this as a diagonal this is called as a super diagonal the one below the main diagonal is called as a sub diagonal only these three entries will come because that shows the interconnection between the adjacent bodies and rest all the entries will be zero so this kind of matrix is called as banded matrix why we need to use this banded matrices let me explain let's we are having aircraft and the dynamics of the aircraft is very very uh, turbulent in that case we can draw this fm like infinite degrees of freedom let's say you have a 2000 degrees of freedom so one wing then you have another wing let's say there are 500 elements on one wing 500 elements on another wing and there are 1000 elements on the whole body so then you have basically because the dynamics is so turbulent we have to make that many number of elements the more number of elements the more degrees of freedom you will take into account more it will behave closer to the realistic system so in that case if we take 2000 entries so then the size of k matrix is 2000 by 2000 how much it is 4 million entries if you see from the point of view of the storage to store only this k matrix we have to have 4 million entries and you can multiply by that many number of bytes depending on whether you want to store it as int long double float whatever you want to store so 4 million entries we have to store you have stored it as a banded matrix because the rest everything so you have this three entries are important so that becomes only 6000 entries which are non zero and rest of all the entries which are all zeros there is no need to store them we can assume that them to be zero so that is a huge memory gain we can have using this normal structure and the structure of banded matrix and then certainly we have to do the coding accordingly so that we can save a lot of memory using this kind of special structure so that is regarding the first kind of formulation newton euler formulation so we have discussed single degree two degree multiple degree significance of each one of the terms called then higher order degrees and the significance of banded matrices whenever we have some system model we have to take a call which kind of modeling we are going in so let's take the example of let's say train model the train model can be written as this spring mass damper system let's say the train has 40 bogies so we can write it as like a chain of 40 spring mass damper system let's say we are a 40 bogies now if we clearly see the dynamics of the train is so stable because if you see the mass of the bogey and mass of the train is very very higher as compared to the mass of the people which are roaming around but if you see carefully we are there in a train a lot of people there is a lot of movement inside the train and there are a number of hawkers are there even uh, we can go from s1 to s2 s2 to s3 to meet our friend even the people have to use washrooms there are a number of food sellers there are a number of cold drink sellers so there is a you can say mass distribution which is continuously changing that mass distribution the change in the mass is so small that all those mass distribution has no effect on the dynamics of the train and we can clearly say that mass of one bogey is m1 this is called as lumped parameter system where we are assuming that the whole mass of the bogey along with the, all the passengers we can assume m1 constant whereas if we go to the flight model where you can see while the flight is taking off while the flight is landing the dynamics of the flight is extremely extremely turbulent it is extremely risky so in that case even the flight 
we are not supposed to move we are not supposed to stand we are not supposed to go to the washroom even the cabin crew is not allowed to move and in that case we cannot assume that the mass of the whole plane is something like a one point mass the variation of the mass has so much effect on the dynamics you cannot assume it as, as a single point mass so over there we have to go for a higher order system like fpm finite element method or assumed mode methods so that's the reason we have to do so we have to take a call whether the dynamics is stable or the dynamics is not stable uh, lumping is possible where the lumping is not possible 